I'd called her princess and now, for the first time, Jehovah showed where Sarah fit into the picture. He changed her name from Sarai, which may have meant something like contentious, to Sarah, the name familiar to us all. What does Sarah mean? Princess. Jehovah explained why he chose that name for this beloved woman, I will bless her and also give you a son by her, I will bless her and she will become nations, kings of peoples will come from her. Genesis 17 5, 15, 16. Sarah straightened up from her work and turned toward the horizon. Under her wise guidance, the servants were happily and busily employed. Industrious Sarah did her own part too. Picture her thoughtfully rubbing her hands together, massaging the aches away. Perhaps she had been engrossed in sewing a patch over a tear in the tent that was their home. The coarse goat hair fabric was faded by years of sun and rain, reminding Sarah of how long they had been living a nomadic life. The afternoon fled by, and now the light was turning golden. She had watched Abraham leave in the morning, and she gazed expectantly in the same direction. As her husband's familiar form crested a nearby hill, a smile lit up her lovely face. A decade had passed since Abraham led his large family group across the Euphrates River and down into Canaan. Sarah had willingly supported her husband in this great journey into the unknown, for she knew that he was to play a vital role in Jehovah's purpose to produce a highly favored offspring and a nation. What part, though, could Sarah play? She had always been barren, and she was 75 years old now. She might well have wondered, how can Jehovah's promise come true while I am Abraham's wife? It would certainly be understandable if she felt concern or even impatience. Two may at times wonder when God's promises will come true. Patience rarely comes easily to us, especially when we are awaiting the fulfillment of a hope we cherish. What can we learn from the faith of this remarkable woman? The family had recently returned from Egypt. They were encamped in the highlands east of Bethel, or Luz, as the Canaanites called it. From this lofty plateau, Sarah could see a great deal of the promised land. There were Canaanite villages and roads that led travelers to far-off lands. In all that panorama, though, there was nothing like Sarah's hometown. She had grown up in Ur, a Mesopotamian city that was a 1,200-mile, 1,900-kilometers, journey away. There she had left behind many of her relatives, the conveniences of a thriving city with markets and bazaars, and her comfortable home with a solid roof and walls, perhaps even with running water. Yet, if we imagine Sarah gazing sadly to the east, pining for the comforts of her childhood home, we do not know this godly woman. Note what the Apostle Paul was inspired to write some 2,000 years later. Speaking of the faith of Sarah and Abraham, he said, if they had kept remembering the place from which they had departed, they would have had opportunity to return. Hebrews 11 8, 11, 15.